Welcome to the Ari Mary and Friends show. And today we have a very interesting topic to discuss and we're talking about NIDS, the bill to provide for the National Identification and Registration Authority for a National Identification System and Connected Matters is now ready to be discussed by the public. This is a welcome change in that prior to the enactment of this new law, the public will have a say before the bill becomes law. The bill which will be discussed at town hall meetings and will be looked at by a bipartisan committee is referred to as the National Identification and Registration Act 2020 and shall come into operation on a date to be appointed by the minister by order published in the Gazette and different days may be appointed under this section in respect of different provisions of this act. Today we ask the questions, do we need a national identification system? How the country can benefit from this system? Should it be compulsory? If we are going to implement the system, what should be put in place to secure the data, prevent illicit use of, and also to prevent hackers having access to the databases? Our guests are Samuel Alexander, businessman involved in the gaming and lottery business. We also have Jennifer Housen, a lawyer who specializes in, in immigration law. We also have Mr. Chung, Dennis Chung, who is an accountant, a business executive, you name it. And we have also Alexander Francis. Uh, Corita is resolved also with us. Uh, she's your normal, uh, regular host, Corita Matthew, and also Colin Mary. And they will be posing questions to members of the panels. Now, we're gonna start out by asking uh, you, each of you, we're gonna spend probably two or three minutes telling us what do you see as the importance of this needs? Is it important or is it not important? Should we implement it or not from the Jamaican perspective? And probably we should ask, so who should we ask? So Jennifer to start out first. All right, good evening all. Um, thank you uh, for inviting me on. And certainly having been one of the persons who had brought an action against the government in order to ensure that NITS was constitutional. I am pleased that I'm able here to also give a voice and my own views on this. The fact of the matter is that I believe that an identification system of sorts in any country within this digital age is important. Um, but as it relates to the necessity of it, I think that there needs to be a little bit more. So yes, I do believe that it is not a bad idea, but um, as we certainly brought the litigation, I believe that it has to be constitutionally sound. Now, I know we're gonna go into it later on, looking at predominantly some of the other countries that have been pushing this forward. And we've seen this mostly so in Africa um, being pushed. I mean, in recent times, we've seen Kenya, for example, bringing this on board. And what we've seen in those countries is this push that if you don't have the ID, you will not get government services. Now, Jamaica is different because of course we have the constitution that says that can't happen here. But one of the things I think is crucial in looking at the ID system and is a concern that has been raised within um, the African subcontinent is that, is it that the focus is on the ID and not its impact on the people themselves. So as we delve into it a little bit more, there are concerns I have. So for example, you know, there's the ability for a police officer or superintendent to access this. Um, if there is some mess up with your information or it has been given out inadvertently within the act, it doesn't specify what the um, penalties will be for those controlling the data. And lastly, I am very concerned that the NIDS does not seem at the moment to be working in tandem with the government's new Data Protection Act, which has been passed, but has not been enacted. Um, and so I am nervous that it just makes a cursory reference to it by saying, we will ensure that this meets the Data Protection Act or is consistent with it. But then it goes on 
to set out certain things which are already provided for in the Data Protection Act, but is dealt with differently here. So one, I am concerned about it being a focus on the ID more than the impact it will have on ordinary Jamaicans. Two, I am concerned about the function creep, meaning it is supposed to be there for ID, but what is to stop someone or somebody getting uh, use of this data? And three, the authorities will be responsible for this and in charge of this, what is their liability in the event they don't deal with the data properly? Thank you, Jennifer. Uh, let's go now to Dennis Chong. Yeah, um, thank you, Vernon. Um, I, I think it, it, it needs to be compulsory. Um, I've always felt that way. I think that if you're going to develop your society, you need to have a national identification system. There's no doubt about that. Um, if we're serious about development, you know, uh, because many times we put things in place and um, we don't do so comprehensively because of the polit political reason, you know, um, and, and therefore I think that I agree with Jennifer that you need some more teeth in the law. I mean, I read through it. Uh, persons who are responsible for the, the, the data. Um, I think that there needs to be some, some more significant penalties, not just a fine, but imprisonment. There, there are certain places that I see where they just allow for a fine. And I think imprisonment is needed, you know, if it is breached. Um, I also do not think that, there sh the, that the, the authority should report to a minister um, I, I don't have much confidence in ministers themselves controlling these things. I think that it should be something like the Integrity Commission or the Auditor General's Department, you know, where it reports into Parliament. And um, when these people are appointed on the board that they, they, they have a tenure, you know, that, that no one can upset. You know, once you get to the point of ministers appointing people to boards, then you're going to, it's possible to have a compromise of the system. Um, but I think it's, it's necessary for it to be compulsory. Um, I am I'm, I'm disappointed that, you know, we would sit down as, as legislators, parliament, and, you know, this is what we come up with. Um, it, it seems as if the, the political considerations are more important than the development of the society. And therefore, I would move a lot of those things out. Um, I think that in the act itself, there, you know, it, it doesn't seem to to go deeply enough into certain things, um, you know. And um, if I look at for one example, for example, I look at. I mean, Jennifer mentioned the whole thing about the the, the reference to the Data Protection Act, which I agree that needs to be in place, the Data Protection Act. Um, but then you go into under section 24, for example, um, no, 24.5, right? Um, that says that if someone, if, if the data is not used for eight years, then it is wiped clean. Eight years is too long. It, it, it encourages inefficiency um, in the police force and the, the courts, for example. So these are some of the things that need to be looked at. Uh, but as I would say, um, Vernon, it is necessary um, whether we want to, to have needs or whatever we want to call it, at the end of the day, we need something that's going to be compulsory. And, you know, we, we tried with the TRN, that didn't work. You know, um, we have NIS, that doesn't work. You know, at some point in time, we expect our parliamentarians to get this thing right and get something to us that works for our, our development. Thank you, Dennis. And let's move to Alexander. Last but not least. <laughs> yes, good night, Jamaica. Good night, fellow panelists. Um, I'm certainly happy to be here discussing this, this topic. I, I remember when the first um, MIDS bill was introduced, I remember um, having some very heated conversations on social media with friends. Was certainly a hot topic for a good eight months. 
Um, and boy, I would start out agreeing with, with, with Dennis about the, the, the compulsory nature. One of the things that, that, that really um, I liked about the first needs bill was the fact that it was compulsory. And um, it, 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 is, it, is, it doesn't make any sense for a government to have a population of 2.7 million people and you can't identify so many persons. You see so many times, um, not to say that this is skewed definitely to law and order, but we see so many times when a, a, an officer or a story comes over about a particular individual that is either wanted by the police or somebody just um, that they're trying to find. And the name of the person is Black Boy or Bulby or Shooter or Shorty. They can only identify that person because, by an alias because this person is technically unidentifiable. Right? They will not be putting forward any form of identification and the state has no way to actually find out what is this person's identity. Um, so for me, needs is long overdue. As, as Dennis said, we've gone through a couple of them. Um, and if you notice, the most, the most uh, successful one of all of them was the electoral ID. And that is the one that um, has the biometrics and all these things. Um, with it. So I, I was very, very disappointed, and I still do not understand the action of, unfortunately, the opposition when they challenged it, because to my understanding, no, no the opposition was not opposed to the compulsory nature of the, the law, and yet the, the, the unconstitutional ruling came down more so on that matter of the compulsory nature of it, um, as well as for, for, for kids. Uh, persons under the age of 18 years. So for me, this is long overdue. I see no reason why when a child is born, they shouldn't be given their unique number. Um, you're part of the Jamaican family and you're, you're given this number. Not only that, I had a, a case, a, a, a relative of mine the other day, he's, he's attending school and um, uh, luckily there were two of them. Luckily, one of them had a, a, a passport and they needed to open a bank account. The other one didn't have one. And of course, the banks will not allow, I would not use a school identification card, um, a sufficient identification to open a bank account. So a lot of persons, and if we want to move towards digitizing the society and having that whole matter of financial inclusion and stuff like that, we should be encouraging youngsters having um, bank accounts from early. And at this point, a lot of Jamaicans, a lot of persons in that age group, say 12 to 15 years would have difficulty. You're just leaving school. You do not have an, a, a passport. You cannot open a bank account. Mm -hmm. All right. The, let me just clarify something before we continue. The compulsory nature of it, that's a constitutional matter um, that has been dealt with in the court. So if you need that to be changed, you have to first, you have to change the constitution. Can I see counsel here? Yes. Um, uh, thanks, Alexandra. You know, I, I want to say something first and foremost to Vernon. Alexander, Dennis, um, Harry, Mary, let's just make something clear. I sit in this seat tonight as Jennifer Hosea, attorney at law, Jamaica, barrister at law, England and Wales, attorney at law, New York, state Supreme Court, I sit, and I sit out of the third judicial department. I sit here as a lawyer. In Jamaica, we need to stop seeing this orange and green foolishness, all right? Even though it was brought by the opposition, so I need to get that clear. I don't sit here as PNP right now. I'm always intrigued when I used to do criminal law at the very start of my legal life. I used to always be intrigued by the people who would cuss about, why, you know, lawyer, they make the teeth them get off. And they are the first ones to be at the doorstep as the parents of persons are saying, my son never do it until it visits your doorstep. It will, it's kind of like the people who say, well, if you don't have nothing to hide, where you're not going out. No, it doesn't work like that. And Vernon, All right. I think, I think it, Jennifer, I think we got the point, Jennifer. Right. See, the I point we're trying to get now that it is a constitutional matter. If Absolutely. we want to go that way, then the constitution would have to be changed. Absolutely. Let's, 
Right. Yeah. Let's spend some time. Hold for me, hold. Let's spend some time, you see, looking at why I want us to get down to some more details as to yeah. why do we think the needs is necessary or it is not necessary. Well, but Vernon, I, one minute, Alex, right, so I'm not finished. What I'm okay, saying is we yeah. already have systems. We have a driving license system. We have an electoral ID system. We have an NI system. Here's my point. Why aren't we consolidating what we have, build on that, and digitizing that? Why are we borrowing $8 billion to create an ID system? We've All right, uh, Jennifer, foreign. Jennifer, I don't want to go down that road, but I can tell you the, the IT person that I've consulted with. Each of these systems, they have defects in them. As you already know, the electoral system came to being because it didn't have any numbering system. Then you had the, the, the um, TRN because of the tax purposes. Then you have the license. So you have separate things. I wouldn't call them systems. So I, that's a different discussion. What I want to look at now is a yeah. need for a needs. Is there a need for it or not? And I, yeah. Could Go I ahead, Alexander. Right. Okay. So... Uh... All right, and I was, I was, I was getting. I think I went through a couple of the reasons why I think we needed needs. And the next one is um, a lot of, with, with probably the exception of the, the voters' ID, which is another ID that um, it's a pretty good ID. But with the exception, you, you have the, the driver's license situation is, is is absolutely ridiculous. You can't depend on a driver's license because it's it's heavily faked and copied. Right. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to give you some direction here. We are moving out of, remember I said to you, we have to keep it concise. We are moving out. Hold yeah. for me. No, no. I want you to stick to the yeah. topic general that I'm putting to you now. Yes. We're not discussing we're national ID in terms of driver's license. What we need to look at, the need for a national ID or we don't need it. So exactly let us stick to point. that point. Which is exactly my point. I'm saying the forms of identification that we have today has proven to be insufficient, that they're not reliable. That is why I was applying for a loan just not, not too long ago, and a lot of persons have the same problem. You go to a bank now, or some institutions, they're asking you for two IDs. Some are asking you for three, because they do not trust any single one of the identification systems or, or, or cards that we have. Okay, so basically what you're saying then is that, hold for me, I want us to make our points very concise. So what you're saying then is that we do have no proper national identification system and there's need for one. Exactly. Okay, the um, Dennis and the others, no, we, get, we got the point already. We don't want to belabor that point. Um, other members, no man, you're gonna hold it there. Dennis, you wanna come in here? Yeah, um, I, I think it's necessary because um, as Alexander said, the other ones are inadequate. Um, the fact of the matter is that, you know, we don't have a national ID system now. Um, you know, you can choose to register to vote or not. You can choose to have a driver's license or not. Um, you know, you can, you can choose to pay tax or not. And therefore, you don't have to have those IDs. But what we need to have is a national identification system where everyone is on it. And we need to fix what's there because, you know, it's just like the, 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 the ticketing system. You know, it don't work. So, you know, we need to put things in place that work because um, the truth is that the cost of not doing it is going to be significant. Um, you know, we're not going to be able to, to, to control things like social security properly. We're not going to be able to control things like crime. You know, so it, it's, it's very necessary. But Dennis, what I want you to, I want you to speak specifically, rather than say, we'll be able to control crime. I want you to give us examples paid for. So I want us to be very specific in terms of the... Well, well, that's it. I mean, if you have one ID that you can recognize the person by, then it means that, you know, you, you, can, you, can, you can work across um, various government departments. As you said, you have a ticket outstanding it means that, you know, you, you can't get help somewhere else, you know. So it's a, it's a way of accounting. I mean, just think about a company, for example. You, you work in a large company, and if no one has an ID, or you can choose to have an ID, you know, how do you recognize people? And it's just a practical approach, you know. Um, and I hear you that the Constitution says that it's not like that. But, you know, 
we, we have to move with the times, you know, we, 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 we're moving into our digital age. Um, and the truth is that if we want to develop the country, then that's how we have to go, you know, um, because we have to have one way of identifying people across the board. You know, we can't say that we, we, we're asking for a TRN and, you know, someone might not have it. And we have a situation now where many people don't have IDs, many people don't have bank accounts, you know, and because of that. So how do we move towards digitizing the society? How do we move to controlling the population as it grows? How do we move to ensuring that social services, you know, are, are adequately and fairly um, distributed? Um, the only way that we can do that is if we know the citizens who are in the country, you know, and we cannot know the citizens who are in the country unless we have a central database that we can control them by. Could I show this one at the lawyer? Um, that in Jamaica, one can vote and you're not a citizen, nor even a citizen of uh, the Commonwealth country, of any Commonwealth country. Um, you have that, Jennifer. I'm sorry, say that again, Bernard that someone can vote in Jamaica and you're not a citizen of this country nor are you a citizen of any Commonwealth country? I'm not aware of that. Uh, any of you, Mr. Alexander, you are aware? You know how you register somebody to vote? Uh, yes, I know the process, but yeah, I didn't, process. as far as I know, you have to either, yeah. I think you have to reside in the country for a certain period of time and and you have to be a citizen. I, I, I wouldn't aware of that. Um, no, I, I'm telling you you're wrong on that one. You are not required to produce your birth certificate or anything. All happens is that if the political party say you live, if I'm wrong, I would love somebody to correct me. You're not required to show any birth certificate so long as you live in the area and both are those, the, the JLP paper, whichever party, so long as they are delegates or whoever, scrutinists, whatever you call them, accept that you are a citizen, then you are put on the voters list. It's not much with the RGD to ensure that you are a citizen, sir. I'm sure uh, right you have to be careful. And, and I mean, now I'm going into politics and from a personal <laughs> I mean, no, I, 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 because I didn't understand the question. Yes. I thought you were saying somebody who is not a citizen or a Commonwealth citizen, because the, the law says a citizen or a Commonwealth citizen can vote, right? But you're actually saying a person with no ID. So no, I think now I understand what you're saying, but. The reality is the first port of call is to go to the EOJ with your birth certificate, right? That's what has to happen. The birth, so it's not to do with a scrutiny or the JLP or the PNP. It's not the JLP scrutiny or you the PNP scrutiny. Your birth you go with your, sorry, Alex, you're saying something? No, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Right, right, you go with your birth certificate. The EOJ confirms it initially. Then, to confirm where you live, both a JLP scrutineer and a PNP scrutineer and an EOJ officer turns up. So we have to be careful of our information. No, I'm very, I would ask you all to do research because I'm telling you, if somebody is, many Jamaicans do not even have birth certificates and they do vote. Yeah. Miss Alexander, you ought to know that so, you're in the field. Yes, but it may be illegal, <laughs> Bernard, but I think what you're saying is no. that you're saying the, the, the politicians, JLP, PNP, no. right. are facilitating this. No, 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 that's what I'm saying. No, no, that's what I'm saying. What I'm saying, I'll put it to you guys. So um, if you can prove to me that it is not, so I'll be happy. I'm only putting it to you that a significant amount of Jamaicans are I not registered. I they are they registered as voters. There's no verification to see that that person is actually a citizen of this country. Now, we probably won't be able to do that here, but I'm going to suggest that members of the panel look into that one because well, that's how well, open. Well, 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 Vernon, Vernon yes. I want to say to you that, I, I mean, this is the first time I hear it, but I don't find it difficult to believe because I have never been verified. You know, um, people visited the house where I, where I was living and they just they put me on the list. I, I have never gone to the EOG and been verified. 
That's the point I'm making. And yeah, the point yeah. I'm making, I'm surprised that you guys don't realize that. The point oh, yeah. I'm making, I, I should be doing this as the host. I was trying to throw it out to you so we have a more a wider discussion. That even the voters card, and you also know that for the driver's license, now, in recent times, they have been using the TRN to link it. But there are person who, persons who yeah. use one name and they are registered in a different name. And it was when they started to computerize the right. system that they realized that there was this challenge. But, but, but that's right. That's right. Explain to you all that we so far we have not had a proper system. So no, no, put it in... the system is there. The fact that it is breached does not mean that those who should be ensuring the system. That's the point I am trying to make. You know, it's as if you guys are saying we don't have a national ID system. That's not true. We have one. It's called the voters ID system. It has a flaw in that just what you and Dennis have raised is right. I personally oh, also no, know. Yeah, but Jennifer, we don't have a national ID system. No, no, one, I'm going to make No, no, no but uh, Jennifer, uh, I'm, I'm uh, going uh, to tell you. Could I, job, can tell you there? Could I tell you there that as far as I know in other countries and generally, a driver's yeah. license is not seen as I'm a not, national identification. I'm not looking, I'm not or, or, speaking or, or, of the driver's license, though. Eh? Yeah, yeah, but the voter's ID wouldn't be national ID too, because it's only for people over 18. Yes, it's not. I, I, understand, I understand that. Want to vote. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> something as well, could I say something? Yeah, There's a part of the, of, the, of the system that we're overlooking as well, and this is where this, this, this system would, 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 would actually do significant damage to fraudsters. There's a part of, of, of NITS that will allow for verification of a voter ID card, which is which which even makes it better than a national a, a voter's ID. You walk into an institution, there are going to be institutions, right? That would have a portal set to the national database. I walk in and I present my card. I don't know if you just made that card down the road. Your number is on that card. That institution can now run that card number, and that number will come back with your basic information, your, your photo ID, and probably other information based on how it is set up. And that, to me, would be a game changer. Because you can yeah. fraud the IDs you want to fraud. But I'm trying sure another one at you because I'm going to rub you all because you're not being as specific as I'd like you to be and you're allowing me to be getting involved. Let me give an example. In other countries, hold for me, in other countries, you have what is called an e-verification system. So if you go to the United States or Canada, for example, to seek employment, the employer is required to use that system. Some might not, and they'd have to employ you off the payroll. In this country, somebody can come from Cuba, America, Canada, and work, and they are not required to be verified. And there is no system that the employer can verify the person is a Jamaican or not. It will take care of that. So that's where I, would, I want you guys to go in, but you're not going there. You're allowing me to get to it. But, 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 but that's the point. That's the point I made, and I think Alexander made it a Vernon that in order for us to ensure an efficient system across government, across yes. the country, you have to have a composite system because. I mean, I like the arguments that you put forward, Vernon, because what all we've been talking about just now is showing us why we need a compulsory ID system. Exactly. That when somebody is born, you know, they, they, they have to they have to have a, a unique ID system because the truth is that what we have now is totally inadequate and too many things are falling through the cracks. And, and you know what concerns me is that you guys keep saying like this is the sort of utopian ideal. This is this will solve our problem. And you know something? You are wrong. And I'll say why you're wrong. It is a good idea. Yes, I agree with you, gentlemen. But if you actually sit there and actually believe that we are going to have a system, that the system is going to run without the faults that are um without the faults that we currently have. That's what I'm concerned about. So you say, oh, it will take care of this. It will, no, it won't. Until we fix, for example, please let me finish here. For example, the act provides for an authority, right? It provides for a regulatory authority. Um, De Dennis mentioned something earlier about the eight years for section 24. What he did not flesh out 
was that section 24 provides that you um, the authority cannot divulge information except in certain circumstances, which is if a superintendent asks for that information. But even after they do that, they have eight years to then take it up, which he says is, is long. So my point is that when you look at the act and the authority that is to be in charge of this, they are, the efficiency starts from there. So if we're inefficient in EOJ, we're inefficient at the driver's license authority, we're inefficient to check if somebody, please let me finish, have an ID. Because when you go to vote, they have a black book and they have your fingerprints there. If you're saying that all of those systems are being breached and it's going to be fantastic by having the single ID, then we fool ourselves. But no, at but, this but point, I want to welcome MP Julian J. Robinson. Um, Mr. Robinson, good night, you're good here. Um, I'm going to allow you to probably speak at this point. We've been looking at the need. We're not looking at what has happened so far, but we're looking at the need for needs, or if we don't need it at all. And if we're going to have these needs, what is the role of needs? And we have looked at, for example, some persons have said that it ought to be compulsory because just the same way if you are born, you are registered, then you need to be assigned a unique number. There's questions as to whether driver's license, a system, uh, whether they could put all of them together, driver's license, tearing and make into one system. Why is the need for, for needs? Now, I'm going to ask you at this point, uh, is needs important? And if, if so, if not, why not? And if so, how do you think it ought to be implemented? Well, without a doubt, it's important. And I believe there is a, definitely a need for a national identification card. I think there are too many Jamaicans where, and I think what COVID has demonstrated as you, we were forced to move to electronic or more digital forms of not just communication, but paying out some of the benefits. There's a need to identify persons and um, in a way that doesn't require you to go to their, find them physically. So from our perspective, and as I was a party, we are supportive of the need for a national ID. And it, um, you know, we've been through a number of iterations in terms of needs and where we are. So we are supportive and I believe it's necessary. Um, the issue of compulsory that, that was dealt with by the court's ruling last year and, um, you know, it is not compulsory, but I do believe there are ways that the government can incentivize persons to use the card. And, you know, whether it is going to be tied to, for example, financial institutions may make it a requirement if you're going to do business with them that you need to have an needs or, you know, other ways. And, you know, if you take the TRN, is the TRN compulsory? No, but if you're going to do business with the government, you need to have a TRN. I don't know what they plan to do, but um, I believe there are many ways in which you can incentivize and encourage people to come on board. Um, Jalad, let me put this question to you. If we know it's against the constitution, if you're going to implement the system and it's going to be compulsory, then you can't just implement it like that. You have to change the constitution um, because it'll be, that law will be, become null and void. But the question is, since you are required under law to register births and also deaths, why is the needs separate and apart from the RGD? Why is not part and parcel of the same thing? The only difference is that there will be additional information such as biometric information. You mean, why is it not compulsory? That, that's what you're asking? Good, I'll ask the question against the RGD where you are required, every child is required to be registered at birth. Now I'm saying the probably only difference with NITS is that's a new system and that biometric information would be required. And I'm saying, why is it not also necessary to have NITS done at birth? So it becomes compulsory, just like the um, registration of births and deaths. In any case, if somebody died, you'd have to register them too. Again, I, I wouldn't want to go back through what the the court found in terms of that and the level of information and people being forced to and the penalties. No, that's, that's what I'm asking, you know, sir. What I'm saying, you are right. The court has made a ruling. Now I'm looking at generally to look at it because it, we might have to look at change in the constitution. So I'm looking from that point of view. But I wouldn't, my, my point think? is, I don't know if you need, I, I'm saying, I don't think you need to go there. I think there are okay. ways in which 
you can, I can do. Um, okay. Pro okay. provide an incentive that people will want to have a card. If if okay. you demonstrate that there's a benefit in having a needs, as I said, if, if you take the de facto national ID right now is your voter's ID. There are, there are people who do it because they want to vote. There are a lot of people who do it because it's free and they need to have an ID if they're going to go change a check at the bank or if they're going to ha do any business with financial institutions. Um, I know the financial institutions feel very strongly about the need for an ID. They may say, listen, you need to have two forms of ID. Suppose somebody don't want to get a passport, it may be the need. So I, I believe government can find very easy ways to put in place a needs which is not compulsory, but which incentivizes a large part of the population to want to have a card without having to change the constitution at all. I want you to continue to let us look at the benefits um, of needs. Uh, persons have mentioned, for example, um, so Alexander, you can mind, remind us. Oh yes, we mentioned one thing. You'll you be a good person here to clarify that. I put it to the panelists that a person can get on the voters list and that person is not a citizen of this country nor a citizen of the, any commonwealth country. Are you aware of that, sir? Yeah, that, that, that is possible because when you go to register, the, the level of verification that is done at a electoral office, it is possible that somebody can indicate I've been resident in the country for six, nine months um, and get on the list. They, they don't necessarily ask you to, for proof of those things. Um, if, they, if they believe they have a reason, they can. But in, I would say, 95% of the cases, when people are registered, the only query that people um, check is that you are you are of the age. If you are not, then they ask you for a birth certificate, and then they verify you at your home address. So right. it is very possible that people slip through that loop. Uh, that is why I was making the point that it would not be wise to combine any existing system. You have to start from scratch. And also... I, I don't. I don't. Where, where I think there's a possibility yes. of um, synergies is that, you know, in a sense, when you look at what is being required of the new NITS card, is in, it's the same thing for the EOJ card. And I think, you know, we have invested a lot in terms of the infrastructure of um, producing EOJ IDs. <laughs> I believe that infrastructure is something that could be built on to expand it to clearly persons who are under the age of 18 and to use what you have developed with the EOJ for needs. So I, I, I'm not of the view that you have to start from scratch because, and you also, you already have the RGD, which produces um, these with persons at, at birth and death. Now the RGD is being incorporated, but I haven't heard anything about the EOJ in-, in But that's, that's an important uh, point. Yes, we have not heard about that at, at all. Yeah, two things, two things. Yes, go ahead. Yes, I want to touch on that. that yes, Alexander. Samuel. That the RGD is being incorporated, and my understanding now is that it is it is no it would be required that a part of your birth certificate would also be that unique um, national identification number that will now become a part of your birth record. Yeah. Right at, at birth. That that is my understanding. Of it. The, other, the other thing about the, 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 the EOJ um, system, why my understanding that they would not use the EOJ system is that it is in some way a little bit, call it outdated, they would essentially to actually go back to use that type, that type of a database technology would actually be more a problem than actually bringing us forward. So it's easier for them to incorporate rather than build on the EOJ system at, at this point. I, so I, I, I have an IT person here. If I've never IT... heard that, that, that reasoning um, proffered. Um, I, I would say by and large, the EOJ has maintained the database without, um, I mean, you hear rumors and you hear allegations, but without any major breach of security of the, the 1.9 electors who they have a lot of information on and um, you know there, there are continuous ways of improving it but I, I would tell you I think what is also a significant driver is that you know we we got a loan from the IDB to pursue this and to pursue it in a particular way and and I think that more than any other explanation is probably why it is being done the way it is being done. Well, I just want to put it here. It's a pitch of an IT person here, but I will tell you with my knowledge of IT, that is not it's, it's a simple matter of taking one IT system and place into another. 
But um, Vernon, I think you, you said it correctly. You're not an, I'm, 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 I'm not in any way being rude. You're not an IT person. No, man, you're not, no. You right. and, and I think that what Julian says, um, uh, it, it, it makes, well, I don't want to say makes sense. It, it's, it's obviously, if you work it through logically, if you've already got a system with 1.9 million, and as, as you guys had said earlier, we know it starts with 18 year olds, right? Which means that the under 18s is what needs to then be fed into this. And we're saying if this is already there, then it ought not to be a quantum leap. And I don't want somebody saying, oh, what this system, listen, again, you're not an IT person, I'm not an IT person, um, I must of, hold for me, hold for me, Jennifer. Jennifer, hold for me. Hold, hold for me, Jennifer. Just, Jennifer, just, Jennifer, Jennifer no man, hold, hold. No, Jennifer, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Jennifer. Hold on, Jennifer. I didn't. Jennifer, Jennifer, please respect the chair. Thank you, thank you. Um, no, I was just going to continue. I listened to her, Jennifer. I listened to you, but that was not the real point I was going to. I was just going to make a point and say, we really need an IT person. I was only putting it to you all that it is not as easy as that. But because we don't have an IT person, I must tell you that I have had 10 years in the IT field. I'm only giving you for my experience, but I'm not qualified in it. And I'm saying to you that we do not have an IT person, so we cannot go into in-depth uh, discussion. It is very clear to me that so far, we have not heard the IT person speak up on this issue, and we really need to have them. So that's enough I say on that IT issue. Moving forward, back to you, Jennifer. All right. Yes, um, I heard you. I was simply saying that um, if there is an infrastructure already and at, with, at the risk of being repetitive, then um, what we were saying earlier, and, and I've lost my train of thought now, um, the fact I was, and that's what I was saying, I was nearly finished, but the point I was making was that if it's there already, why are we reinventing the wheel? We keep saying over and over, yes, but a brand new system, and as I say, it is not going to be the... Um, yep. The point yeah. I make is, you know, the IT person, Clive, I want to move on from that one. Go ahead, um, Samuel. How do we get the dead people off the, the, the out of the electoral? Um, um, no, you tell us with the ID. You tell us. How do you do that with the I national think, ID system? To me, to me, it's a, I, I would not discount that, 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 that suggestion. But to me, if we believe, remember now, this, we're kind of, we're kind of limiting this, this whole thing to needs. Remember this whole effort that eight million dollars is not entirely to build out the needs um, infrastructure. It is to digitize government. So from 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 a lot of the records that we have in government will be digitized through this. The, the, the websites are supposed to be um, improved and made more secure. A lot of and it's a matter of trying to get the government into the 21st century to, 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 to be going off digital information rather than paper. Um, it should extend, it, 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 it's going to be extending to health as far as I'm concerned as well. We could end up with digital records at health and, and that sort of thing. I think it's- Let me just answer your question. Needs. Let me, let me just answer the question. You asked how, and I just think it's important, I mean, I've made the point about the EOJ, and I believe there are opportunities for synergy. Um, the, you know, how you get dead people off the list, the EOJ has a process. They work with the RGD's department. Not perfect. It's not automated to find the names. They work with the local electoral offices. So, for example, I can go to my EOJ office and indicate that John Brown has died. I might provide a funeral program or something. Somebody goes out there to verify that that information is indeed correct. So I understand there is a process that exists. And the only point I'm making is at the end of the day, and I know a significant part of the loan funds is devoted, are devoted to doing other activities that are non-needs. My point is a $68 million US loan, I believe you can get the a national ID without utilizing so much funds. And I obviously have to be concerned about it because maybe my children and grandchildren will be the ones paying back the loan. Yeah. That's the only I, committee member, panelists, I am not hearing you being very direct. So, for example, um, Julian mentioned about uh, getting dead people off. 
No, I, I expect you guys to say you need a system which operates real time so that if you have a need system and if somebody dies, the moment you go and you register that debt, then that person would automatically come off the, the electoral system. I'm not hearing my COVID that's panels that's touching that. Who do I get? Samuel, who do I get? Samuel? I guess I'll, Dennis can go, but that's, I'll just say quickly, some of the $8 billion is, in my opinion, is actually to put in the infrastructure to do things like that, to have digital reporting rather than paper trail reporting, where you can simply re record a debt from a funeral home or from X place with the verification just like that, rather than having to go through this long process at RGD or the tax office. Yeah, yeah Vernon. Yes, yes Dennis. Dennis. I mean, I've listened to the comments and, you know, I think this is why we can't get anywhere in the country. Um, but I agree with, with, some, with most of what Samuel has said and, and what you have said. You know, we can't solve the problem of how it is implemented here, right? And I agree that it is much more than just uh, putting in an infrastructure. And it is very difficult to change an infrastructure that is not working. Right, in my experience, it is very, very difficult. I mean, it's not just the, 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 the cost of it, but also the timing of it, of doing it. It would be very, very difficult to take and something is, like that. There is, if I can stuff. help you with that, I think you're talking about the architecture, the structure of the database, yeah. the conversion yeah. of database. Yeah, man. I, I know a little about IT, right? I, I actually... Um, IT comes under me, right? And I can tell you, it, and you should know, Vernon, it don't work like that, especially no. if you have, if you have um, outdated code that is not supported. Ah, that's it, right, exactly. Uh, outdated code, something. you have to, yes, yes, yes. Right. I don't want to go into details. So, I do know enough because I worked in the field for 10 <laughs> years as a programmer so, analyst, so, so, but it won't I mean, be I, I, think, I think what's important for us to get and understand yes. is that based on what we're seeing, Vernon, we do have a need for a compulsory system of recognizing our people. As I said, I can't imagine my company saying to people when they come in, you have an option to have an ID or not, right? We would have some serious problems, right? But you will also and have a problem, Mr. Chung. Um, the law also stipulates that you can come out I, of I the system that. at any time. I know that. That's so a very I'm serious matter. Speaking, I'm speaking first about what needs to happen, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that that is how we have to approach the problem. We have to say, listen, guys, this is what needs to happen, right? Um, and we have to work um, from that. So we start, the way to solve a problem is you start with it, what you want first, and then you work back from there. And then we have to look at it and say, okay, is it worth it to go this route or that route, right? based on the fact that if we don't have this thing in place, I can tell you it is going to stymie our development as a country, right? We are not going to be able to progress. And all those other things that have been put in place, right? TRN, EOJ, whatever it is, it has not worked, right? And I agree also with the point Jennifer made that the, the, the act, I'm not looking at, the, at how the act is now. It has to change. There are some fundamental things in there that needs to change yes. if it's going to work, right? But let us start from the point that this thing must be in place if we're going to move this country forward, right? Um, and I can tell you, I don't, I, I, I'm speaking from a personal point of view, I don't have much confidence in, 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 in just parliament looking at this and solving it because they haven't been able to solve anything in the past before, right? But I'm saying we need a system like this in place. Let's start with that problem, which is what we need to do. And we need to work back and say, okay, how do we resolve these things, right? Because we can't move this country forward if we don't have that. We, li listen, I mean, we can't, it is, it is very difficult to incentivize people, come on. You realize the amount of people who don't have a bank account in this in this country, right? You realize the amount of people who are not on the voters' list. What's the voter turnout? 
right? You realize the amount of people who do not have a TRN or the amount of people who have multiple TRNs. But can we say though, um, can I interject here and say this? And again, I'm not, I don't wish for you to guys to think oh, I'm sitting here and I'm going against this, not at all. But um, Alexander said something and I think I, I, I must correct him there. Um, because you, you mentioned something about the monies and said, oh, you know, I think some of it is for this. And whether you're thinking of the top of your head or you have personal knowledge, one thing I will raise now, by the time that the matter was in court and just before the decision had been um, uh, promulgated, 1.36 million US dollars had been spent on advertising. Advertising, not advertising to, 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 to educate, just advertising in newspaper, um, 1.36. So whilst I understand that you're saying that some of the money is for other things and so on, I can sit here and tell you that an ex the 68 million was for the needs and whether that is special for other places. But one of the things that, as I said earlier, the authority that is to be put in place to oversee stuff. I think one of the things we really need to do is to ensure we are auditing how this approach to that, to getting our needs on board is dealt with. Because we may find that we get to $68 million US later and we might still have to be borrowing more. And I just think it is something that if we're not going to be, um, uh, uh, good stewards of this money at the beginning, we might not end up being good stewards of try, trying to implement this. Uh, and, and the point does, is, does, does it include our biometrics and everything like that? Pardon? Biometrics. Yes. To be oh. uh, mandatory. Yes. It, what it, you mean the 1.3? What the no, no, you're asking what is included in needs? What, what information you'll need from needs? Your, a photo ID, your biometrics, a manual signature, address, your 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 address and date of birth and stuff. On a, on a well, card. but but if you decide to enroll, you have to give your. It is pretty much the same things that were in the old oh, the one that was shut down. So everything that Alexander says, but also, so if I choose to voluntarily enroll, I would need to give my spouse's details, my address. Any other address that I have, my mother's name, my father's name, that is included as well. So in the new act, I mean, it is being fairly comprehensive. Um, I don't know if it's too early to make this point here, Vernon, and I know you had mentioned it pre um, before about um, moving on. But one of the concerns that, um, I know you, you said I'm an immigration lawyer, I'm actually a human rights lawyer, um, which immigration is only a part of. But one of the things, when we look at the Ivory Coast and Senegal, which have introduced this, with using monies from the EU, is that uh, uh, an organization called um, Privacy International found out that the safeguards of the system were so poor that inadvertently the information that was in there was being able to be used by the EU for deportation of Senegalese and people from the Ivory Coast from the EU. So I think one of the things we have to make sure is that the Data Protection Act, that the need, sorry, becomes consistent with the Data Protection Act. The safeguards are there information commissioner that is raised in the Data Protection Act that a place is made for them in the needs because otherwise we could inadvertently be compromising our own citizens if our overseas partners like the US, the Canada and the UK start asking for access to that database. Well, well, um, just just reading the bill here, the bill that I read, un, un, unless there's some clause that I didn't see, but the bill that I read um, does not allow for disclosure of any information within that database to any third. That's party. incorrect. If you look at section, no, look no, at section is. twenty-four. 
the commission um, of police can under certain circumstances. Yes, as well as yeah. national security. Yeah, yeah, national, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but, but they have to they have to get an order from the court. Hold for, get, hold for, hold for, hold for, hold for, hold for, hold for me. Hold for me. You have to get an order from the court, and yeah. the, the police the, on the, the police as far as no uh, uh, overseas mm. entity no as far as I know can have that. No, no, they can't. But I, I think I, I think the point was I don't know if that it was done legally. I think, yes. I think the issue is the ensuring yeah. that you have the safeguards that it's not abused and that yeah. you Probably. don't have unauthorized but, 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 but of it, information. It, it, it doesn't discount the point that Jennifer makes. So I think it needs to be much tighter. It needs to be much tighter along with the Data Protection Act. Um, the persons who are responsible for the data, I think there needs to be a lot more stiffer penalties. Three million dollars. So. The million, they need to face prison time too. Million dollars. And I think they need there, to face some prison time to not just pay a fine. There are some remedies in there, I saw. There's a general remedy section yeah, that, so, that, that made yeah, yeah, No, but, but when it's speak to specific time. offenses related to these people, they don't mention the prison thing. They need to go to prison too if they, they, they disclose certain information. You know, okay. so, so I, mean, the, I think the act is a good start, but it needs to, it needs to tighten up a little more. And then this is the matter of paying the fine and continue as usual? Yeah, it, 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 it just say a fine. I mean, there are certain sections, I made note of it here. I plan to do a submission. It just said pay a fine, in, which in certain places, I think they need to have a, a imprisonment part in there too, because so who, I mean, when you, have, when you have people's data that they're playing with, you, you can't. You know. Dennis, let me give you. I have to hold for. Let me give Dennis trouble now. So, who's going to pay for the inca um, yeah. inca incarceration to feed them and clothe them? Who will pay for that? No, but sorry, Alan. I'd love to give. It, let me just. Dennis. I love to give him some trouble, Dennis. So, Alan, I'm asking because I'm confused with what Dennis is saying. See, there are penalties for persons. So, like me, for example, I, I might if I mess around with data or whatever. Right? There's a two million fine. But the, but the thing is, if the government, if the, not the government, if the authority negligently, inadvertently, advertently, recklessly deals with your information, there is, I am not seeing any penalties as against them. So that's where, Dennis, I wasn't sure if you were talking about persons who for example, hacking the system or I'm, I'm, I'm talking more about the, 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 per, the authority, the authority. That, that's, those are the persons I'm talking about more. But there's it's, nothing in there against them. I didn't tell me where it is. I thought and, it was uh, everybody that, else. And that's why I'm saying that we need something in there. Oh, right. By the way, um, <laughs> panelists, let, I hate just to get bogged down into the specifics of the law. Really, I want you by your experience to tell us what ought to be there because Dennis already made a valuable point that that body should not be answerable to a political leader. And I think that's a very important point. If it's not answerable to a political leader, then it means therefore no government would have that right to, uh, to authorize the release of, of any information. Any information that would have to be released based upon the law, based upon a commission which is set up under some commission of parliament. Am I correct, Dennis? Yeah, yeah, that's the point because it speaks to the minister. I don't think that this should be answerable to the minister. Right. It should be to parliament. You know, just like the uh, Auditor General, just like the Interity Commission, it needs to go to parliament and there needs to be a time which once you appoint them, you can't move them. You know, um, you appoint them, they're there for seven years and you can't do anything between that time. Unless, of course, due to mental instability or yeah, yeah, some yeah, kind of or, or some flagrant, flagrant breach yes. that parliament would have to address it at the time, not a minister. I think we have a few minutes left. You know, what I want us to do, you know, is not to constrain ourselves to what was there before the new law, because I've looked at the law myself, and that's why I want you guys to come up with your creativity. Dennis and Jennifer, you have mentioned some points already. When I mentioned the one about the, the electoral registering persons or not, Jamaica, because I know that shocked you all. Now, if, if we look at systems rather than looking generally and be creative, we will see what is not there. And I'm telling you, if you look at what we have, then that will restrict our minds. Uh, Dennis made a point which I love. We must first look at what we want first. Then we need to, how do we get there? And how are we going to get there? 
And I think that's the main thing. For example, the people of this country, I don't think they have been sold on the idea as to why we need this needs. They haven't. No, I, 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 I beg to differ on that. I, I think, I think we, 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 we're underestimating um, the Jamaican people in that regard. Because for the most part, if I've spoken to, if I've spoken to 50 persons, I would say 40 out of the 50. You don't move in the same circles, Alex. I, I, I speak okay. to 50. I get I, 49 who say they don't want it. I, 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 I've not gotten that. I got a, a lot of persons that I've spoken to are in support of needs. Uh, Mr. Alexander, <laughs> let me help you there again. You're go Mr. Alexander, let me help you. The question is not whether they understand it or not. The question is, as Mr. As Dennis Chong said, we need to know where we want to go. The point I'm making, if it was sold to the people as to where we want to go, probably would not end up with so, many, uh, so much controversy. Probably so that's is. the point I want you to deal with. Probably in terms of selling this thing, thing, have we marketed in terms of where we want to go? I don't think we got a chance to properly do that, whether we got and then came the action. So I don't know. No, no, oh, please. Alex, no, don't with do all that. due respect. No, don't no, do that to Alex. No, with all due respect. I mean, there was, there was no, an effort no. by the, there was a, there was a, there was a no. genuine effort by the government to do what? A lot of seminars, they went around the country and they held well, a lot. It was illegal. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was let me illegal. just say this. Let me just say this. Exactly. Let, me, let me come in and, 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 and protect him. But I, in trying to protect you, I, um, I have to be very fair yep. as a judge here. I, I don't think I can agree with you on that one. And I must all tell you, you probably, I've been on this thing for probably over 30 odd years. Exactly. When you know to unread, when I started to push this thing and said to government that we need to go there and talk to the people, that was not then. What we saw, was an announcement and then we heard that it was going to be discussed in parliament and then it became very political the moment yeah. something like this becomes political you are going to have a problem if it was sold I, to the people it could not have been so political vernon i agree yes. with you i was at the psoj at the time and that was one of the criticisms i had of it it was not sold to the people properly i do not think it was marketed properly to the people and 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 told them why we needed it. There was a lot of noise about it, but the truth is that the substance was very low. We're in a good space now, I think. And that space is here we are. We're talking about it. Um, when it was actually passed, the opposition had come in that day, and all they were asking for was for it to go to a JC. We are here now. We are here, we are stakeholders. Everybody Jennifer, has an input. Uh, carefully use that word, Jennifer. It passed me, it passed quite a number of persons. That's this what it passed what... us. Sorry, a joint select committee. My, my apologies. We're both, all we're asking for, let's have a discussion. It's, yes. affect, it's going to affect us so bad. Let's talk about it. So again, it wasn't to say no. It was let's just as we are doing now. And I think we've all said one Yes, it's a good thing. Two, we're saying incentivize it. But it can't just be a wanted compulsory and it don't make sense otherwise. No, unfortunately, our constitution doesn't allow for that. So let's work together with something that is going to be workable and legal and can help the country, as Dennis says, for the development of the country. And it doesn't matter who is in power, who gets in power. This is something that, yes, in the US, the social security works very, very well. In the United Kingdom, your similar the equivalent of the social security there, like our TRN, also works. Unfortunately, in Jamaica, the TRN, which is supposed to have done what a national ID is supposed to have done, hasn't. So in England, the NIS is given at birth. It is now, it's given at birth. So it holds the person to that. And so I'm saying that if we can get something workable, legal, and for, that will develop the country, I don't think that we are all far removed from the same thing, wanting the same thing. Okay, um, I'm gonna go a little bit offline here, Mr. Just a little bit off. Um, yes, it, Colin. Yeah, is this a system now? This one is more like for Mr. Alexander where the government will be tracking somebody from, say, six years old, the school coming up, 
So he will know from six years old to maybe say 20, if that person is an engineer and accountant or whatever. So if somebody say in the US want an accountant, the government can look at Mr. Alexander and say, okay, this is what he's trained for. And, 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 and um, recommend Mr. Alexander to that firm, you know, and um, would that, would, would that be advant a, a disadvantage to um, people who are not that educated and all those things and getting jobs and all things and is it like it's a control, you know, of, of people knowing exactly where, you know, what you are, you know, your profession and all of those things. All right, all right, Colin. Uh, yes. no, I, don't, I don't think you have to be worried about that. <laughs> I mean, but yes, the, the, the plan is to have this system of identification tracking a Jamaican citizen from birth. You'll be given what is called the NIN, which is your national, national identification number, and it will be linked to your national identification profile. Um, the understanding I got from the from the bill is I think you will have to uh, uh, re-verify your information. I think it's every five years, I think, if I remember, off, when you're under 18. And after 18, I think it moves to every 10 years. Right. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. It changes after a while. Over 60. I know, I know over 60 is every 15 years. Right. Mm -hmm. That but to touch so at that point, um, Sabel, what it does is allow the those departments that are dealing with statistical information. Right. It would make right. it easier because if you have a record of all your citizens, then it would be better for you now to get to do. I guess it would be easier to do sampling, for example. If you're going to. So yes, your, your things like your occupation. So that would be um, denoted on your profile. So for example, the other day when. They were rolling out the, the as as Julian alluded to the, the whole um the 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 COVID relief, right? The government, if they had this database, could easily mine that database and just by virtue of that database. Well, Alexander, I'm gonna hold it there. You have to carefully say mine that database, you know. Yeah, because but... this is where fear, that's why we talk about marketing. You know, I'm sure Jennifer, I don't need Jennifer to tell because I know Jennifer has ton of you don't want to have a database where anybody can jump in. What you can say, there are certain general information that can be released, but you would not want any government entity. Let me let me finish to just have access. What you can do, you can produce use a list of names and national IDs for a government in department to work with, but not for them to interact and, and to have that direct interface. Yeah. I'm but sure Jennifer and, and Joanne. If you, have a database, if you have a database like that, um, um, Dervon, it, it, Vernon. Vernon, sorry. It, it, that is, that's, that's how we are going to get value for money. You know, It's been able to do things like what we wanted to do in COVID relief to say, okay, these are the persons based on occupation. No, um, Alexander, Samuel, hold for me. It doesn't even make it clear to you. No. It is not the database that you would need. You can get information that would have to be given by, you have to get permission. The moment you're going to market it, that government can have access willy-nilly, you're going to have a challenge. I'm just trying to help you. Now, if you say that that information, that database can provide to another entity as requested, but carefully say interface to the database. I'm just um, cautioning you. Whichever way, whichever way you want to put it, but that data. No, 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 no. It can't be whichever way. I, I expect the legal counsel to at least be helping me here, you know. But Jennifer has That's why I'm because, listening to him, you know, because he's actually saying exactly what my concern is. Is right. that yes, you can use it for COVID relief, you know, Alexander. But what else will you use it for? And by whom? Who can access it? Who can ask you for information on me? You know, I was saying to Vernon today that come January 31st, I will no longer be on WhatsApp because they're asking me to sign up to certain dates and privacy that I refuse to. That is my choice. If it is that I want to use WhatsApp, I will choose to stay in. I don't. So what I'm saying is, if it is that you're going to use my data, I want to know why. Even if I sign up, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm not going to sign up enough. I might as well sign up voluntarily, but you must ensure that if you're going to use my data, it's not always oh, there, we can access it. That concerns me.
could I, could I ask Julian, um, uh, I'd like to hear Julian on this, in terms of, you have, the, uh, and, and Dennis, in terms of having all this information in terms of, um, you know, people's occupation in particular, occupation, so to direct social services, wouldn't that be a legitimate way to be able to use um, this database? Uh, well, all right. remember, under the Data Protection Act, if you're going to, you own your data, the data that you provide on yourself, your wife, your partner, them, all of that is your data. Now, the, the, the challenge is what becomes legitimate. Is it legitimate for a political party to use the data to target voters? No. no. Okay, all right. All I'm saying is, there, there are definitively legitimate ways that can improve public services, and there are many ways in which it can be abused. The, the, the point is you have to ensure the safeguards are in there, which is not just passing a data protection act, but ensuring that the data protection act is in operation, that you have an information commission, etc. And you know, I made the point in the joint select committee on Tuesday that I wanted it to be a commission of parliament and not a department reporting to a minister because you will never know when somebody will come up with a bright idea about how valuable this data can be for many other reasons than legitimate ones. And that's what we want to ensure that we have systems to safeguard against that. Mr. Robinson, yeah. you're wrong. You say you never know, sir. I know. Yeah, I, I, I agree um, with <laughs> I Julian. Know, Mr. Robinson. I, I agree with Julian on it. I mean, we can we, we have to be careful somewhere because um, you know, people will use data for various things and, you know, we have to be very, very careful about All right, it. All right, Dennis, let me give you an example. If I get, for example, 100 million US to provide data to the um, external source to do so and so, which do you prefer, to pay $3 million or to get that 100 million US? If, 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 if you get 100 million US, where is it, Vernon? For data. I work, I'm, I am the, I'm at the highest level, so I can get that data. And that's oh, another oh, point. Oh. Yes. Which would I <laughs> yeah, take? Yeah. The 100 yeah, million I mean, US or the, the 3 the, million the, that I'll be charged the, for? The, the, the rational people. man would take the 100 million US. The fool, like a Vernon, would probably take, um, <laughs> uh, would, would not take any. And yeah. the whole nation <laughs> would call me stupid. Yeah, right. And, and, and that's the point. I mean, I agree with Julian. You know, you, you have to be extremely careful about this, this data thing, which is why I said that it should not report to a minister. It has to report to parliament and you have to have some strict penalties for people at the authority who, who breach the, the, um, the duty that they have under the law. Yeah, but for example, with, 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 the, with the US the other day, my understanding is that they were checking um, social security numbers against occupation and, 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 and um, certain uh, other characteristics in the, the, the US is not a, The US is not a standard to use right now, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Well. That is answered you. That is that is answered you. Um, the US is not a standard. No, but uh, Dennis, no. we only have about six minutes left. I'm not going beyond 10 o'clock. But it's clear to me that whatever we've been discussing here, and you notice I stayed far as much as I've read the law myself. I wanted more in terms of coming from all of you. I have got some though, in terms of, as Dennis said, yeah. where we want to go. It is not clear to the people where we want to go. And when we have decided as a people where we want to go, we need, need to decide how are we going to go there? And when we decide how we're going to go there, then we have to think about the environment, the legal infrastructure, the computing in, uh, environment and the whole works. What we did was probably come up with a law and then everything must now fit in place. And I will yeah. tell you, no thank you, no thing so. I think one well, of well, our that, biggest that, problems in Jamaica um, is enforcement. Um, if you guys remember when Elephant Man had come through um, the airport, what was the fine? Remember? That huh? was what was on the, that, the problem is that that was a, what is what was on the books in a Jennifer. Uh, no, man, and I understand that, Ali, and I understand that's the point I'm making, you know. We don't update and we don't enforce. 
So if this um, works, Jennifer, I can help you. That is why we're trying to come up brand new. It will not depend upon somebody's discretion to enforce. If you do not follow the law, it's a natural thing that right, penalties right. will flow. So if you're going to have a law, and for example, the minister says to the head, do ABC. It means therefore the head has a responsibility to report the minister. If she doesn't, she now becomes liable. So it's all about, you need a system where if you do A, there are repercussions. We depend too much on the discretion of somebody okay. else. To right, and I, and I think that's where we're going with the act in making these suggestions is that when we look at sections 23 and 24, it says a lot of stuff of, of what should not be done by the authority or those in the authority. But they both end, they're very, very long, but they both end with no penalties yeah, against yeah. all of what is said should be done. And I think it's something, as I said, it's not something right now. I, Jennifer, can I sit here? So, well, I think we should make them pay $5 million or something. That's not what I can do. All I can say is it needs to be in there. The draftsmen, as well as when they go out and do these tunnels and these discussions, look at what would make sense, what would be a, 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 a best scenario deterrent, for example. Let me show what in, let me show like, uh, what in the wheel again. The, the law requires that you follow the rules of the FAA, right? That's the finance, um, I can't remember what it's called now, help me, Dennis, Financial FAA. Administration Act. Yeah. Right. But you ought to know that you're supposed to present your audited statements annually. You're also supposed to present quarterly audited statements. If you don't, what are the penalties? Well, I mean, if you, if you don't- That present sounds like a deep well, Dennis. If you, don't, if you don't present them on a stock exchange, you can't get delisted or, or you can- you, you, they, No, I'm talking about government, trade. government departments, no, government departments. No, 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 what a lot of people don't understand, you know, the tax department does not require audited accounts, you know. No, 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 the, the law requires that government departments must oh, government. do quarterly, oh, oh. must do quarterly oh. audits and must be submitted to the Auditor General. Also, yeah. um, they must done. present audited accounts annually. Now I'm saying to you, what is there in the FAA, which says that if you don't, the head will be locked up or the board will be locked up or charged $20 there, million, there, dollars, there, not $3 there, million. There's, dollars. Not, there's nothing in there. And, and if, if there's if, nothing in there, how is it this new act is going to refer to that act? <laughs> well, 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 well the, the, the truth is that if we were to enforce and legal it, course is going to tell me that I'm not a lawyer. Yeah, if, if you were to enforce it, don't worry. Then if I'm giving you trouble. A, 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 lot of, a, lot of, a lot of government places would shut down if you were to enforce it. No, no. I would that's the, and that's the problem, Dennis, is that again, I come back to it. And I, again, I'm not laboring the point. I've passed this. I'm saying it's not that we don't have the systems in our, even this. Um, as we, we come into, let's say NITS is enforced and we get there and we're trying to push forward. My genuine worry, separate and apart from any potential human rights abuses, is my genuine worry is that the enforcement and the, the, the workings of it will be too lax. It will be too, um, it will not be upheld. I'm genuinely yes, worried about Jennifer, that. Genuinely. Yes, but, but uh, Jennifer, Jennifer, let me help Dennis with something. Dennis said that if you have that system in place, you'd have to lock down the government departments. I tell him, no, it is the heads who'd have to pay for it and they'll but be fine. not doing nothing wrong your bags and go, Mr. No, no, well, Jennifer, Jennifer, that is why I made the point initially that the, re the reason why we're in the problems that we have is because we've not had a parliament that has been acting and that comes back to your enforcement issue because parliament is supposed to be updating the laws. They're supposed to be enforcing all of these things and it's not happening. No. Well, and that's the issue. we have, let me see, I think we have what? What time we have left? One minute. I'm going to give each of you and you all allowed me to talk too much, you know. <laughs> oh, you allowed uh, yourself to talk too much, Vernon. You're not jumping from me. You see, I say, I want to show you. My name is Vernon Darby, and not Trump, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, just let me give Mr. Robinson his final thoughts, and then before he goes. Yes. Mr. Robinson. Julian, Julian, I think I can see him on, you know. 
it's, 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 I think he's off, Fred. I think he's on. No, it's back on. Sorry, I have to, sorry, I have to jump off. My, my apologies. That that was a uh, internet break. But I, I'll have to leave. Um, but I'm willing to participate in you know future discussions like this on the subject, which I think are are important. Yeah. All right. So thank you. Have a good night, everybody. Good night, thank Julian. You. All right. Okay. Uh, Samuel. Yeah, well, um, a good discussion. Obviously, there is a lot to flesh out on this matter of needs. I, as I said, um, I, I certainly think it should be compulsory. Um, it doesn't seem that we're going to the road, unfortunately. Um, but I guess we can work with what we have. Um, I guess 200 years from now, every, 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 every Jamaican will have an NIN, right? Because all of us will be gone. Uh, there will be a new generation. So I guess it's a start, and I think it's going to help to put this country on the footing where we want, which is a digital society that increases, um, increases productivity. I hear Dennis talk about this thing all the time, productivity, and, and that is where we need to go. It, 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 all right. Mm. Um, the good thing is, um, these conversations, um, just as an FYI, um, the Joint Select Committee, that's the both sides of the house, the people who are looking at this act, they are inviting comments um, by Friday, January 29th in writing. And so if anybody is listening, um, there's an address, Vernon, I'll send it to you just in case. And yes. so persons who are interested really should be sending in their concerns as it relates to the act. Um, and as I say, it's these discussions that I think are crucial and that's all I would require because all it is, let the Jamaican people know what's going on. Well, I want to thank the panelists, Jennifer Housen, um, Dennis Chung, thank you, Samuel mm -hmm. Alexander, and I have to hand over. I'm, I was just a guest host. So let me hand over now to your regular hosts. There you have it, guys. Thank you, uh, Mr. Darby, for moderating our show this evening. You were one of our guests on our last show last year, and um, you are the first on our first show this year. So thank you for doing us um, the honor of moderating our show this evening. Um, to all our viewers and panelists, um, on behalf of the Irene Marian Friends Show, our co my co-host Colin Mary, I want to wish you all a prosperous 2021. I know that we all had a rough year last year or the majority of us had a rough year last year. And so we do hope that you will have a prosperous 2021. There you have it guys, needs to be or not to be. You heard from our panelists, um, you know, we will come back with a part two to this show at a later date. On behalf of Colin, my co-host and myself, I'm Dr. Coretta Matti. Thank you all panelists. Thank you all viewers. Join us next week at 8 p.m for another Irie Marie and Friends show.